please don't bring her. Uh, I think it'd be better if he came on his own and just get it over with, you know. Hang around for a couple of days and then get lost. That's my message to him. Uh, let's talk Royals, uh, Belly. Let's talk Royals. Hazza is going to return to the UK in just over a week. This for a ceremony marking the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games. Mike's not interested, but, I mean, listen, he annoys me so much anyway. But the Invictus Games will be the one bright spark. Amongst all the debacle and the PR disasters, the Invictus Games is probably one of the better things he's arranged and been part of. Would you agree with that? Brilliant. Have we lost him? Is he frozen? Basically, what that is, he's actually got... He was on the golf course and, he, and he's fallen down the eighth. He's fallen down the hole. What's happened to him? Has he got to that age? I can keep talking. We go, oh, Belly, what happened? Are you back? Uh, well, maybe there's problems with Scottish Wi-Fi. I don't know anyway. But uh, what, what I... What I, oops. Uh, what I can tell you is that the, the Invictus Games is something that he is absolutely passionate about. He set it up with his brother. It is sad that they're both not able to mark this occasion together at St Paul's Cathedral next week. It's on the 8th of May. It will be a celebration of what has been a really positive thing and it, throughout and over these 10 years. But, of course, increasingly, even the Invictus Games has sort of had to deal with some of the PR fallout of this. But fingers crossed, next week, I think Damien Lewis is going to be reading the Invictus poem. It will be a chance to reflect on the good work that Invictus Games has done over the uh, this period. And, and maybe there will be a time we'll see it being staged in this country. Prince Harry expected to be back uh, for the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games. Meghan Markle surprisingly not expected to attend with him. Uh, the, the only reason I say that is because I think it's going to look very sad for Prince Harry to be there without any members of his family to celebrate the Invictus game, Games at St. Paul's Cathedral. And I thought Meghan would recognize that and want to be there to support him. Uh, but uh, reports saying that she's going to stay behind except to meet him in Nigeria yes. you know, the following day. Yes, they're in such so, demand. Yeah, and the funny thing is, is that, you know, to get from the US to Nigeria, you kind of have to fly over Britain. So you might think that she would sit, think about stopping over, even if just to show him some moral support, um, to, be, if, uh, to be home in the, the hotel footprint? room. Yeah. The carbon footprint? <laughs> um, well, I mean, let's not mention the carbon footprint. But, you know, this is all coming, you know, out of their kind of um, headquarters, if you like. As, as kind of a bit late in the day, isn't it? I mean, I, I, did, I wasn't aware that he was coming back. You may have been um, coming back in May, but, but that's what he's going to be doing. Um, it's going to be a bit awkward because his father, the king, is going to be hoping to be out and about, trooping the colour. He's thinking of being seen in public again, getting back to work. We know that Prince William is still not speaking to him, unlikely to see him. It's all going to be a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah, I think that this is a really interesting time for him to, to to come back. I do think he's going to make a significant effort to see King Charles, not only because of the King's health issues, but because Harry and Meghan monetize their relationship with the British royal family. And it's, it's very important that they continue to remind the world, and especially Americans, that they have that connection because that is... Uh, how they truly make their their money over here. Right. Uh, so he will, I think, make an effort to see his father. I agree with everyone that says there's no way that there will be a visit with Prince William and the Princess of Wales. The Duke of Sussex's first visit to Britain since early February after his father's cancer diagnosis. Now, he and Charles met for just 30 minutes on that occasion. What will happen this time around? Uh, Katie? Do we have any indication of whether there'll be time for a meeting between the King and his son? Well, I think the King will make time. I know there's been speculation in the media that, that he's not going to have time. His diary is too busy. But let's not forget, you mentioned when he came back in February. I mean, on, on that occasion, the King actually said, you know, darling boy, don't hurry back. Let me get to Sandringham. Come and see me there. But Harry was absolutely adamant. I think he was so shocked to hear that his father had been diagnosed with cancer, that he wanted to come over immediately. And, you know, even though it didn't quite fit the King's agenda, he made that time for that brief meeting. He will he will make time. I mean, there is a huge amount of water under the bridge. There is clearly a rift that needs to be healed. But I, I do know 
um, and this is even pre the cancer diagnosis, that the king was in a place where he really wanted to reach out to his son, to have a connection with him, to get to see some of the grandchildren that he is not getting to see grow up. And I think anyone with any experience... He's met a little bit what, once? A handful, a handful of times, actually, yeah. a little bit. And I think anyone that's gone through a cancer diagnosis knows that it changes your perspective on so many things, not least those familial relationships. And I think the king will do everything he can, actually, to make time to see to see Harry, because he's not over here very often. Mm. No, Russell, um, what, what do you know? Believe yeah, I was surprised at those thing. reports. I mean, yeah, the king is busy. He's got a packed diary, but that doesn't mean that he won't make time to see his son. I mean, it would be absolutely churlish. And the relationship isn't what it was um, just a few months ago. I definitely think um, even in recent weeks, I mean, Katie's Things right. Things have softened. Things have softened, definitely. Mm. And Harry is here for um, not an extended period of time, but he's certainly got time to see his father. And I think we saw demonstrated after his cancer announcement that even if it's just a snatch meeting, 30 minutes here, 45 minutes here, whatever it was, it's uh, it's definitely going to be on their, on their agenda. So it's a shame Megan isn't going to come and one may wonder whenever she will come again. But certainly for, for Harry and his father, the, those green shoots of the relationships are starting, I think. Are we surprised that Megan's not going to be at the Invictus service, given how important mm. this cause is? to Harry and how much she supported him mm. uh, throughout it. No, I'm not surprised because I think um, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, knows that whether she's here or not, she's going to end up tabloid cannon fodder. And I think she just doesn't want a bar of it, doesn't want to be part of it, isn't interested uh, and wants the focus to be on Invictus and on celebrating 10 years uh, and on Prince Harry on this occasion. Can I just say, I, I'm not sure she would be because I think that it's it's about Invictus. And when you look at when she did come back for the, the late Queen's funeral, even the Platinum Jubilee, it wasn't much made of the two of them being here. And I don't think that there were any daggers out for... There was a little I think, was, listen, I think a, a lot of this more. is social media commentary. I can't mm. see that the papers were out to, to get her. Certainly it wasn't... Part, there was no sort of circus in town when the, when the Queen... Um, when the Queen's funeral happens, and um, she has supported Harriet and Victor's before. Exactly, and I, that's why I thought I was quite surprised. Got onto the stage she before, and I don't think it did detract from and Victor's. Think it actually made it even bigger because she was yeah. there. I, mean, I suspect that she just doesn't feel terribly welcome here. I think that mm. idea yeah, I think so. of coming back to Britain for her. I mean, she's going to have to do it at some point, but I think it's not going to be easy. I mean, they mm. did get they, there was a, a smattering, but they did get booed last time they were at St Paul's Cathedral. And they I think did, that may yes. have weighed, weighed heavily on her mind. Thirteen years. And actually, it's a lovely photograph um, taken by uh, the same person who actually took the photograph, I think, of the king and queen last week. But it, uh, I think when we know the backdrop of that, the 13th wedding anniversary, it's obviously at the moment something they're not really in a position to celebrate because the main priority is the return of health of, of, of the Princess of Wales. And it is nice to see sort of happier times. And that was a a, a splendid occasion um, that was enjoyed by many, as indeed was Harry and Meghan's wedding enjoyed by many. But obviously since then, the popularity stakes for the individual couples have gone in different directions in this country. A return to work for the King and a very carefully chosen mm. engagement. Told you this was coming, didn't he I, did. Sarah? Last time I was on the show, I was hearing rumblings that he was going to be back sooner than, than trooping. And um, he chose to do this engagement. I think it's very telling that um, his, his return to public duties was something so personal and clearly now very important to him. And, and cancer and raising awareness for cancer, but particularly the early diagnosis of cancers, I think going to be something that we see the King champion. And um, actually, a friend texted me who's got no interest in royal things at all, and she said, the King has never looked more connected to the people. And I thought, she's absolutely right. I mean, he's always had an empathic, personal touch, but to be able to sit there with people who are going through chemotherapy, who people have gone through that shock of a cancer diagnosis, and to be able to look them in the eye and say, I felt that, I've been there, in fact, I'm on my way to an appointment, is an incredible leveller. And so um, I think, uh, you know, out of something awful has come something wonderful. Yeah, it's a really good point, isn't it, Afia? Because he sat there holding hands with mm. fellow cancer patients and he wasn't there as the king. He was there as, as one of them. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you're right in saying, I always say that health is the greatest leveler. Um, and I think it was really, really important uh, for him personally and, you know, in uh, in this public sphere to be seen doing that. And re it must be really great for him to be able to connect with people. You know, it's tragic that the Princess of Wales and the King have both have this cancer diagnosis at the same time, but they can find common ground in that, in each other, and it's a very lonely place to be in. And so to be able to connect with people on that level is incredibly important. And I think such a, a brilliant uh, engagement for their first, you know, foray back in, for his first foray back into public life, first joint engagement that we've seen for Charles and Camilla uh, since November last year. Um, so yeah, great to see him out and about, but you know, we must remind ourselves and everybody else that it doesn't mean that it's a full return back to public duties, that you know, the palace are going to be keeping an eye on how things are going over the next few months, but definitely we'll see him back out on public facing duties more and more. So now Harry and Meghan are going to go on a pretend royal tour of Nigeria, which I think is strange, do you? I think he is Harry Bon Jovi. Harry, <laughs> Harry, I don't know another rock star's last name that's as good as Bon Jovi. So. <laughs> uh, well, that'll yeah. do, that'll do, Harry Bon Jovi, yeah. I mean, it's, it's strange, isn't it, to, to sort of feel the need to tour places uh, because that's all he knows how to do. Look, they quit this job. So I, I'm, not, I'm offended at the thought of any sort of idea of a quote unquote many royal tour. You quit that job. This year, what this is, is I, when I worked in event planning for celebrities, sometimes we could not afford Mariah Carey. So we would hire her husband at the time, Nick Cannon, to show up. So we get the press. So Mariah Carey would show up on his arm, and we'd get the Mariah Carey type of press. <laughs> These are people looking for royal family type of press, so they'll take the backup dancers. But Nigeria is an, an interesting one. Apparently, um, Megan has worked out recently uh, that that's part of her heritage. So you know, fair enough. She wants to go and check it out. But what will they do in Nigeria exactly? I mean, we, they are going to meet with some service members. Now, this invitation was extended to, the, to them because um, Harry met a representative at the last Invictus Games in Germany, and they got on really well. So they have been invited to come spend some time. They're going to meet some service family members and their families and participate in cultural activities. Uh, as you said a moment ago, Meghan Markle announced on her Archetypes podcast that she's 43% Nigerian and said on that podcast that she intended to investigate further and get to know her roots a little bit better. Um, you know, I, I think that, of course, this will try to be marketed as a many royal engagement, mm. uh, but we have got to remind ourselves these people quit. This is a visit. This is a casual visit, um, and we should not we should not brand it a, a many royal engagement either, because these are two people that chose to leave their posts. They right. did they didn't want that job. King Charles made his return to frontline royal duties today. This was his first since announcing his cancer diagnosis in February. His Majesty visited the Macmillan Cancer Center in uh, Central London with Queen Camilla by his side. Um, when asked how his treatment was going, he responded, "I'm all right, thank you." I, you know, he told some. Someone else I'm, I'm doing well very humble very kind uh, and you can really see how invested he was throughout this engagement in the conversations I know this is a sore subject but we always love and remember Diana for how compassionate she was and yeah. how engaged she was on this engagement uh, on these royal engagements but knowing what the king is going through privately personally and then watching him throughout this engagement, you saw that sparkle. You really saw that sincerity, that concern, that empathy, and that compassion that we used to always glow about when we talked about Diana. And, and you know what, kids? I just think that's one of the biggest strengths that the monarchy can bring. You know, we've, we've had a pretty torrid day today in this country with a 14-year-old being knifed to death and police officers being stabbed by samurai swords. We've got problems, as America has. But there's something... I mean, you know how fervently royalist I am and there's something wonderful about, you know, somebody who's going through stuff and, and, and just being down-to-earth and real. And I'm a massive, massive fan. And I think that he... It, it, it probably sounds the wrong thing to say, but, but 
he really, to me, has resonated with the British public over this more than he's ever resonated, to be perfectly honest. I think it's sort of, it sounds a terrible thing to say it's been the making of him. Would you agree? Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily a terrible thing to say. Um, you know, the American media is kind of positioned this as, is this the end of the monarchy? Is, you know, doom, doom, doom. But I completely disagree with that. I feel like people are so much more invested in the safety, mm -hmm. the health, the future of the monarchy today than they were a year ago, two years ago. Um, I feel like people now, there's a real compassion and empathy for this family. Everyone's experienced cancer, um, ha has been affected by cancer in some way, shape or form. And now people that were typically tuned out and didn't feel like the royal family affected them in any way, shape or form are engaged and committed to the journey. So I agree with you that people are now so much more interested in this king and hopeful and, and concerned for him. Let's talk about the king. Yesterday he was out uh, and about in public. He was wearing his dinosaur tie, I'm told. That always means that that means he's in a good mood. Um, if you say so, uh, but that, I saw that and I went, okay, well, yes, uh, it's, it's, well, he's, I think he's in a good place. Yes. And actually what was most revealing about yesterday was that, you know, cancer, um, it doesn't matter who you are, you were all, we're all liable to it. And yes. the King just showed then that he is just like any of us. He's mm. going, had to go through the same emotions that every other cancer sufferer has gone through. Yes, he might have access at times to uh, great treat, better tr the treatment is always there for him, mm. given the sort of protocols around him. But most significantly, when he said, "Look, when he when he was first diagnosed, that shock moment of having to comprehend what does this mean now going forward," mm. I think just brought the sort of human aspect to it, and knowing that he's just like any of us, he's had to go through the same emotions. And yes, it's good news that he's now it's deemed that he's able to get back to these public facing mm. duties again and yesterday was the sort of emotional one he couldn't sort of hide behind sort of you know sort of just platitudes mm. this was meeting fellow sufferers so yes. he had something immediately in common with them which you could see from the way he was interacting with them all right and he looked pretty well i thought didn't you i have to say um he does look he has looked throughout his treatment remarkably well uh, yes he was going to have more chemotherapy after his visit yesterday so fingers crossed that the recovery continues apace and that we will see him regularly throughout the summer there are obviously some high profile events that he would expect to be at right. um, you know um, the D-Day celebrations there is the state visit from the Emperor and Empress of Japan at the yeah. end of June along with a number of other uh, occasions including garden parties and investitures which hopefully he will be able to uh, conduct. Yes, and is he expected that, the, I think we, we, we're led to believe he's expected a troop in the colour as well, right? Yes, well, there's even talk that he might ride the, um, what they call the troop in the colour, the King's birthday parade in early June, mm. so that would be a further testament to his recovery, but I'm sure he'd like to be there. His late mother often used to come down in the car and then sit on a chair as yes. the uh, soldiers uh, performed the, the uh, you know, the trooping of the mm. colour, so it, hopefully he will be there and at other events, including Royal Ascot, where hopefully he will have a runner or two mm. to uh, uh, make his day even better at Royal Ascot in the summer.